verses from the ninth chapter of the book of Acts before we go home today and share just a little bit. Just a little bit. From Acts 9 and a few verses here. From verse 1. It says, and meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, mm -hmm. men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he asked, Who are you, Lord? And the reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up, enter the city, and you will be told what to do. And the men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they also heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open, he could not see. Read that again. Though his eyes were open, he could not see. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and he neither ate nor drink. Ask your neighbor, how do you convert a Pharisee? Can you say that just for a minute? Yeah. And we're going to go home together. Six days journey from Jerusalem to Damascus. Mm -hmm. And there was a passionate determination on part of this religious zealot to purge Israel as he understood Israel from the followers of the way. I can hear him asking himself, how could this dead Galilean carpenter produce such an undaunting group of followers? Mm -hmm. And the story says that he had just left Deacon Stephen's assassination. Amen. And he held the coats of those that stoned Stephen to death. But he could not forget, I am sure, the look on Stephen's face as he died and left this life to enter into the glory of the Lord. He believed Jesus to have been a political anarchist and a religious blasphemer worthy of death. And all of those who followed him also worthy of death. And Paul had been appointed, let's be clear, given ecclesiastical papers, mm -hmm. orders to rid his people of false doctrine. Mm -hmm. He had papers okay. empowering him to drag them to Jerusalem for mock trials and imminent execution. And he hated them anyway. Amen. Uh, Amen. <laughs> why? All of that love and all that singing and junk. Okay. <laughs> so his purpose or his papers matched his prejudice. That's a dangerous thing, by the way. Amen. <laughs> Okay. 
Right. Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. The thing that he was enforcing, he kept that because he believed himself to be right. And that made him all the more self-righteous. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul said of his life as a Pharisee, I was blameless yeah. as yeah. touching the law. Yeah. What does that mean? I kept what it was that was required of me. Because he had a conscience that was informed by legalism mm -hmm. and not by grace. Yeah. Mm. Essentially, beloved, he had no joy in his salvation. Right. 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 Well, you didn't hear what I said. Well, I heard you, Bishop. His conscience was informed by legalism and not by grace. Mm -hmm. He was committed to an impeccable obedience to the law and the traditions of his people and intolerant of anyone who did not keep the law as he understood it. Mm -hmm. He was a resourceful scholar, he was a natural leader, and he was high-born. Can you say high-born? High-born. What does that mean? He was high-born, which means he was raised in a high family, uh -huh. raised in the cultures of both Greece and Rome, mm -hmm. educated in the best schools. He learned theology by the most well-known rabbi of his time. Okay. Man was called Gamaliel, and people yeah. lined up to be able to sit at Gamaliel's feet. And yeah. I would dare say that Saul was a little classy. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a little elitist. Uh -huh. And he was able to wrap it up in the, the guise of piety okay. and religion. Essentially, he used his religion as an excuse to look down on other people. I'm preaching. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And worst of all, he thought with his classist and elitist self mm -hmm. that he was doing God a favor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or did he? Mm. I've contemplated this. And I've asked myself a few questions that I'm going to pose to you before we go home today. Was it possible that Paul or Saul, which was his name before Damascus, was it possible that Saul had a conflict, a moral conflict, mm. on that road. Mm. I think about it because I think that some of us have had a moral conflict. Oh, wow. Anybody understand yeah. what I'm talking about? Perhaps he said, I know these people are wrong according to the law, but my heart is a little troubled about it. Essentially, when you're a little classist and you're a little elitist, anybody understand me? This? Sometimes you can think that people who are not quite up where you are oh, on some okay. things couldn't be right. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't have my education. They don't have my opportunities. Oh, I'm preaching now. They, they don't have. They don't know what I know. Right. I haven't touched bases with the people that I've. Touch bases with it and, and, and bless their hearts. <laughs> they couldn't really be right because they're not mainstream. With the status quo, you just can't be right. But something about these people had to have been correct. In spite of the fact that they were. Confound the world. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And confound a whole lot of folks in the church. Amen. 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 All right. I remember when folks said to me that what we are doing right now we would never be able to do. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Because we didn't have the skill. Mm -hmm. The expertise.